The history of Indian civilization is usually narrated in terms of the rise and fall of various political empires. This cyclic process has continuously shaped the geographic boundaries of Indian civilization. Into this ferment were added new cultural streams coming from other civilizations. The Turkish invasion from Central Asia brought in the Islamic culture creating its own political empires in India. While India was struggling to contain and assimilate the Islamic culture in its political processes, the rising powers of European culture were finding their way into India. Eventually, European colonization led to the formation of the British Raj in India. With this colonization came scientific materialism and the Christian missionaries of European culture. This shook the very foundations of Indian civilization, setting in motion a new awakening. With this awakening came the rebirth of India as a modern nation-state. The post-independence era saw the accelerating process of globalization. And with the arrival of the internet, the cultural streams from around the world are entering and mixing with the Indian civilization. At the same time, the ideas of the ancient Indian civilization are spreading across the world. The celebration of the International Yoga Day is an Indian contribution to the emerging global civilization. But what is the essential vision and work of India among the global community of nations today? To know this, we must be cognizant of the vision and work of the Indian civilization that had been unfolding over many millennia. Behind the apparently random series of political empire building cycles, there is an emerging process of evolving consciousness. linking them together into a meaningful whole. The evolution of consciousness implies a collective conscious being within a civilization. This being is going through the process of its birth and growth through generations of people across the empires. A spiritual history must trace and reveal this process. The earliest memories of the Indian civilization can be traced to the Vedas of the Bronze Age. The Vedic mantras are not a product of reasoning intellect, but of intuition. According to Sri Aurobindo, in India, the reign of intuition came first before intellectual development. The Vedic mantras are still preserved in its ancient form as an unbroken living continuity. It is in the Vedic experience we can find 
the birth and childhood of the Indian civilization. The Vedic Rishis had already discovered the spiritual reality beyond the material facade. And they had also discovered the process of accelerating their spiritual evolution. This conscious and evolutionary transformation of their own being enabled them to access higher consciousness and its corresponding powers. They laid the seed ideas of the Indian civilization. The Vedic age was followed by a descending movement of consciousness, which attempted to take up each lower degree of consciousness and link it to the spiritual summit. In this historic process, after the Vedas came the early Upanishads. The Upanishadic Rishis reaffirmed and restated the Vedic knowledge but in new forms. They laid the foundations of Vedanta While their methods were still intuitive, their expressions had already become increasingly intellectual. This was the period when the Indian civilization reached its adulthood. This period was followed by the Age of Reason. With the Age of Reason came a great outburst of intellectual development flowering into six systems of philosophy and two great religions. They took spiritual truth as its basis and tried to reach it by the power of the mind's reflective, speculative, logical thought. At the same time, the processes of yoga were developed which spiritualized the thinking mind. This period also saw the birth of two great epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata. Valmiki and Vyasa, the most influential poets of ancient India, took up the essence of the Vedic and Upanishadic experience and recast them into new forms suitable for the age of reason. The Gita of Mahabharata brought in a new synthesis of knowledge. The consciousness came down further, leading to increasing codification and systematization of knowledge of that era. As consciousness came down further, the emotional and aesthetic being was taken up as the means of spiritual realization. This gave birth to the Puranic period and Bhakti movements, spiritualizing the emotional being in the individual through the heart and its emotions. This period saw the birth of temples and deity worship. They revived and restated the ancient truths of the Vedas in terms of devotional poetry. Further descent of consciousness led to the development of Tantra, which took up the aspect of power and pleasure and turned them towards spiritualization. This period saw the proliferation of massive temple architecture and related tantric methods of occult sciences. There was a vast expansion of Indian culture across Asia. As the descending movement continued, the Hatha Yoga emerged, which took up the body and its spiritualization.
This was India's entry into the physical consciousness and the plunge into its subconscious regions. And then began the withdrawal of the Indian civilization from its outgoing expansion of the previous tantric cycle. The civilization entered the dream state of sleep and its corresponding illusionism, which denied and neglected the existence of the material reality. It is during this stage of inertia of the inward absorption that the foreign invasions came to India. The powerful force of materialism that came from the West shook India out of slumber. The newly awakened India is recovering her true being. The recovery of the old spiritual knowledge and experience in all its splendor, depth and fullness is a first, most essential work. The flowing of this spirituality into new forms of philosophy, literature, art, science and critical knowledge is the second step. An original dealing with modern problems in the light of the Indian spirit and the endeavor to formulate a greater synthesis of a spiritualized society is the third and most difficult work. Indian civilization's success on these three lines will be the measure of India's contribution to the future of humanity. India has always existed for humanity and not for herself. And it is for humanity and not for herself that she must be great. <laughs>